McKinney Vento defines homelessness as a lack of fixed or stable housing. Currently, one out of every four students at St. Louis Public Schools meet that criteria. Today on The District, we sit down with Students in Transition Liaison, Dr. Deidre Thomas-Murray, to discuss the resources available to families in transition and how students can gain access to a stable educational environment. Thank you and welcome back to The District. Today we are here with one of my favorite, favorite people in SLPS, Dr. Deidre Thomas-Murray. We are here today to talk about enrollment, but it, from the lens of our Students in Transition office. So I just want you to talk to me about um, Students in Transition, what you guys do for our district, and who you serve. Okay, thank you. Um, th so the Students in Transition office is guided by the McKinney-Vento. It's a federal law that instructs um, school districts first to identify the students, and we identify them by the definition of the law. Okay. The law defines homelessness as children who lack fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence. Fixed means that they cannot be asked to leave. Regular means they're gonna sleep in the same place every night. And adequate means that there are no outside elements coming in, mm -hmm. that the house has the capacity to serve the number of people who are residing. Um, there's lights, gas, water, heat, and all those things that keep children um, warm and safe. And, and so we identify these students through referrals from school personnel. Once they know that these kids meet the definition, we provide them a letter. It's called our intake form. That intake form basically states to school personnel, please immediately enroll student as outlined in the federal law. And so we use the intake process, not just with McKinney Vento students, but also with ESSA students. That's the Every Student Succeeds Act. Foster care was once in the definition of mm -hmm. homelessness. It was removed from the law in 2015 under the presidency of B President Barack Obama. And so, what the law requires us to do with foster care students is anytime they change placements, we have to conduct what's called a best interest determination meeting. And so that meeting consists of the children's division worker and the liaisons from the attending districts and the residing districts. And so prior to establishing those meetings, we ask questions like, do they have a 504? Do they have an IEP? And that falls under IDEA. Um, and, so, and so, I don't mean to interrupt, so you ask those questions to who now? To, so the meeting consists of the children's division, the liaison from the attending school, and the residing school. So we ask those questions to make sure when we make an educational decision, they haven't violated the Safe Schools Act, and if they have an individualized education plan, which we know as an IEP, um, we wanna make sure we have the capacity to provide the support and have the right people at the table. So an intake is used with that process as well. The foster care, the children's division worker, completes that form. They complete it, send it back to me, I sign it, and make sure that the school social worker, the residing district, the attending district, and children's division is included on that email. And basically the letter says to enroll the students. And so the goal of the law is to ensure that they have seamless access into schools and that children aren't waiting um, to get enrolled because we failed to educate them about the process. So the reason I asked that question of who you who you asked those questions to is because it sounds like we're trying to make sure that the process to enroll in school is as seamless 
as right, possible. Right. So if you have someone that might not have access to uh, their child's IEP paperwork, or maybe not even know what IEP is or a 504 is, right. that you have the right people in the room that you're asking the right questions to, so that on the first day of school or whenever that child um, goes to school, that all of the things that needed to have happened behind the scenes have already happened. Correct. Okay. And, and so we share those documents. If it's a slip student in a surrounding district, we make sure that our students' IEP is shared with the other school district and the children's division worker prior to the meeting. So everybody is looking at the same thing, seeing the same thing, and just making a child-centered best interest decision. So if I'm if I'm new to St. Louis, or let's just say new to SLPS, I'm a parent or I'm a guardian, and I have a child, and I I know for a fact that I am unhoused or I fit the McKinney Vento definition, or maybe I'm a foster parent. What's the first thing that I need to do to get my child enrolled in SLPS from so, from, from the lens of your office? Okay. So enrollment takes place at schools. What the students in, in transition office does is we provide them with a letter instructing schools to enroll them. We encourage families to come down to our office because we like to conduct what's called a needs assessment. Mm -hmm. So if they're lacking supplies, hygienic supplies, uniforms, just basic needs, we want to be able to make sure that when they start school, they start with all those items. So when, if a family comes down to <clears throat> 801 North 11th Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63101, um, to, to see you and your team about getting the letter or anything like that, do they need documentation? What, like, what do they need to no. bring in order to, to get the ball no, rolling? So, so we encourage them to have documentation. But a, a part of the law says they have 30 days to get those documents. Okay. And the 30 days do not start until the students in transition office is notified and made aware that there's a problem or that the student lacks those documents. That can be immunization, birth certificate, what have you. In many instances, it's proof of guardianship. And so under the law, we have it referenced students as unaccompanied youth, and those are usually students who do not have um, parents or parents may be incarcerated, deceased, what have you. Our, our goal is to make sure they have seamless access. So even if they do not have a legal guardian, they have the right to immediately enroll in school. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> when they, so when they come into office, they're here, you do a needs assessment. What other sort of resources, so you talk about trying to get those documents, does the um, Students in Transition Office, do you assist them we with do. trying to track those documents down? Yeah, so, so once we're aware that they do not have those items, we assist with applying for birth certificates, okay. or we lack them with agencies who offer those supports. Okay, what are the sort of resources um, that parents may need for enrollment Let's, we're talking about maybe uniforms or, or things. What What's on that needs assessment that they could have access to by coming and speaking with someone at your office? So, so that's basically it, the basic needs. Okay. Uniforms, school supplies, hygienic supplies. Um, we have families living doubled up. We provide air mattresses, blankets, pillows, just basic household needs. Okay. At the beginning of the conversation, you referenced that um, – you get a lot of referrals in school, but if I'm not in school yet, and maybe I am living with a family member or a friend, I don't know the McKinney Vento definition of homelessness, how do how does your office reach those people who, who aren't in the district, who wanna be in the district, but they don't go that, that route to get those extra resources? Is there, is there resource, re, are there resources out in the community um, or do, are there community partners that you know that certain communities will work with in order to get access to other things and then they may mention, oh, SLPS, 
has an office of students in transition that that offers this like just i guess my question long-winded as it is how do you get the word out to people who aren't already in the district right so what we do is areas that fr parents frequent we make sure that the law is posted in those buildings be it the fcs be it the WIC office the welfare office the food stamp office what have you we try and make sure our posters are in areas that parents frequent okay yeah and, and so those posters highlight the law okay yeah. um i think that's a that's a great overview of the enrollment process i know the students transition office helps in so many different ways but since this conversation was enrollment i think that's a that's a great place to stop the conversation but as always i want to hear from you talking to the communities out there i want you to, to just let them know about the office of students in transition what you guys offer and and really the things that you can give our students and our families who may be going through some trying times right now well thank you well every office looks different this is a federal law every school district must have a mckinney vento liaison as well as a foster care liaison it's federal law um our office looks different um probably because i came here homeless and you know mm -hmm. there were so many things lacking and because i knew the law and the spirit of the law i tried to make this process as seamless as possible you know it, it's frustrating when you're navigating systems and you connect with folk who are clueless about what yeah. you're going through and and sometimes people bring judgment they don't understand that every time you become unhoused it's like starting all over again they lose everything and so we what we do at st louis public is we try to make this process um welcoming mm -hmm. friendly um no judgment and it, it, i think our families see us as family yeah and and just a resource for them it's it's not that we're ma waving some magical wand we're building relationships and many of them are lifelong relationships where students come back parents come back in many instances just to say thank you our goal mainly is to ensure they experience academic success and have access to resources as their non-homeless peers. For sure. If someone were to see this this um, podcast, this video, and they may be going through uh, a hard time in life right now, how do they reach out to the Office of Students in Transition yeah. uh, to, to get assistance? Yeah, well, we're going to encourage them. Our main number is 345. Well, let me start with 314. Yes, ma'am. Because I know you got all them new area codes. <laughs> but 314-345-5750 is our main line. And and we're located at the Board of Education. And I think you gave the address yes, in the 801 beginning. 801 North 11th Street, St. Louis, Missouri, 63101. Right, right. And, and so, you know, just give us a call. What I like um, since the pandemic is now I get emails all the time from students and parents. And so it, there's seamless access. We have a website, which is on the district's website, the www.slps.org slash SIT for yes, students in transition. And we just want the families and the community to know that we're a support and if if we hear the news first you know be sure to update your email because you know Cheryl Van Oy always assists with that email blast so when the city has funding we put it out there you know we we do not benefit from parents not accessing resources mm -hmm. when they get what they need children come to school prepared to learn and that's what it's all about right that's right right <laughs> always that's great information dr thomas murray thank you for giving me your time 
Thank you for watching us, and we'll see you guys next time.